Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who would spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna Let us go forth in peace.
order of worship begins with the penitential rite on page 351 of the Book of Common Prayer. Bless the Lord who forgives all of our sins. Jesus said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of our Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight who will and walk in your ways. The glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins for our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. <laughs> Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Lord has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning, he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I will not be rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
with grief and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction and my bones are letter of Paul to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Please be seated. Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John, and began to be distressed and agitated, and said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Are you asleep? Could, you keep, could you not keep awake for one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words, and once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of the sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away in the garden. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew the sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, have you, come, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were abandoned? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. <clears throat> Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power, and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do you still need witnesses? You have heard his testimony. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, <coughs> to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! The guards also took him <coughs> over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you're talking about. 
And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed, and the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed on to the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, any one for whom they ask. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison, and the, rebe and the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, For he realized that it was out of jealousy that he, the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to make him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? Crucify him. Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole <coughs> cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him and they began saluting him. They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide which each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed <coughs> by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Ah, you who would destroy the temple and build it. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself, but let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross down, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, Darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, 
Jesus cried out with a loud voice. Io, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. Which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come down to save him. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the Younger and of Hoses and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of this preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Seven years ago, when I moved from Louisiana here to East Tennessee, I had the challenge of trying to explain to people exactly where. Morristown was. <laughs> People would say, never heard of it. I said, no, it's all right. And I said, it's northeast of Knoxville. Well, there's just mountains there. Well, yeah, there are mountains there. And I said, we're not that far away. And I said, I know. We're only an hour away from Dollywood. <laughs> That's something people should get their head around. Everybody knew where Dollywood was. And I have to tell you, Dollywood was one of the first places on our checkoff list that we wanted to visit once we got settled here. And so we had tickets and we went and went into the place. And I have to tell you, when it comes to roller coasters and rides, I'm a bit of an adrenaline junkie. My wife, not so much. <laughs> and so I had a plan when we entered into Dollywood to kind of walk around and look at the different rides and kind of prioritize which ones that I wanted to ride first. And so, you know, we were walking around and looking at the different roller coasters and we're looking at this one ride. It's called Drop Line. You know, it's the one that goes up 150 feet up in the air and you get up there and it slowly spins you around and you can look out and see everything. And then when you're not ready for it, it drops you like a rock. 
And you can hear the screams of people all the way down until the brakes come on. And I looked at my wife and I said, doesn't that look like fun? <laughs> and her response was, we will never know. <laughs> so, okay, we're not gonna be doing this one, are we? And so we were walking around and then we went to the second ride that was on my list. Wild Eagle. Oh yeah, Wild Eagle. You know the one that's got people's three on one side, three on the other, and as you pull away from the platform, you realize your legs are just dangling up in the air. And it's like most roller coasters. When it leaves the station, it climbs up the incline, clack, 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 till you get to the very top. And then at the very top, it just kind of pauses for a minute. And then you lean forward, and it's racing downhill. And as it's racing downhill, gravity's taking over, and people are screaming and yelling, and your feet are dangling in the air, and you're wondering if you're gonna survive this, and you get down and you make a big turn, and then there's a loop, and there's another turn. And every time you think you know what's gonna happen next, something different is waiting for you. Something even more outrageous than the last thing you just did. The ride only lasts about two minutes, two minutes, 15 seconds tops. And then you pull into the station and you are spent. Emotionally, physically, you are spent. I look over at my wife. She had her eyes closed the entire ride. <laughs> Did not want to see what was coming next. And I get that. Some people are like that. Well. I tell you this because in many ways, I look at Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week, has kind of a spiritual roller coaster. You get on this ride and you're not really sure what's coming next. You're not sure about the twists and the turns and the highs and the lows and something is gonna happen next. We get this wonderful story of Jesus' crucifixion, and it's just gut-wrenching. And as an aside, this story, the passion, is one of the reasons why I personally am opposed to the death penalty. Because if you could put an innocent man to death when Jesus was alive, you could put the wrong person to death even today. I've been stricken from two jury pools because I absolutely refused to endorse the death penalty, and I will continue to do so. But this roller coaster ride that we take during Holy Week, it is filled with twists and turns. We walk into this, and we're left with the story of Jesus dying on the cross but it's not the end of the story. We walk into Holy Week, and the next thing that's gonna happen on Monday, Thursday, is we're gonna be retold the story about how Jesus institutes the sacrament of Holy Communion, how he breaks bread with his disciples, how he shares the cup with his disciples. And the part that gets glossed over the most is the fact that he broke bread and shared the cup, even with the one who betrayed him. Even Judas was invited to the table. Didn't see that one coming. And then on Good Friday, we will go through the process of the Stations of the Cross. We have the stations up on the walls here and to remind ourselves of what happened with Jesus. This is something that still happens every Friday in Jerusalem, even today. They call it the Via Della Rosa, the way of the cross. And we get to remember ourselves and be part of the crowd that is going along with that. And then at night, on Good Friday, we take communion from the reserve sacrament. At the lowest point, when our hearts are totally broken and we wonder 
Is there anything more? On Saturday, there's the great vigil. Beginning in total darkness and starting with a single light, the light of the Paschal candle spreads among the people. And the first half of that service is done in darkness. And as people reach, reach that point of the gospel, Jesus is proclaimed risen from the dead. The lights come on and Easter is here. And then Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday is the time when you come to church and you get a little bit miffed because there's somebody sitting in your pew that you've never seen before. And I get that. But they're here. They're here because they're compelled by this story. It's a wild ride. It's a spiritual up and down roller coaster. And just when you think you figured it out, something else happens. This is central to who we are as Christians. This is the basis for why we do what we do and what we believe and how we believe. When we say those words during the, during the Eucharistic prayer, that Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again, that is the core of who we are as Christians. We are resurrection people. We are people who believe that death no longer has the final say, that our God, the one who created us, has more in store and plan for us. And because of that, we can live boldly. Because of that, we can be generous. Because of that, we can let our faith shine the rest of the world to see. So I encourage you, jump on this roller coaster. Do the entire ride. Don't get off anywhere in between. Do the whole thing as one. It would be like picking up a book and only reading the first chapter and only reading the second chapter, the last chapter. You would miss everything else in between. And that would be a shame because you deserve the full experience. And the full experience is to have Holy Week as one, one unit, one experience. Amen. Let us stand and confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begot not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and punched. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. For the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the cross. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> Thank <laughs> you.
Prayers of the People, Form 3, is found on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. Christ's South Pittsburgh. Christ South Pittsburgh St. James Greenville Calvary Church, Oak Creek, South Dakota Trinity, Winter, South Dakota, St. Thomas, Sturgis, South Dakota, St. James, Belfort, South Dakota, and our sister missions in South Dakota. St. Elizabeth's Wapala, St. James Mowbridge, St. John's Bullhead, St. Paul's Little Eagle. We pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every <clears throat> member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Brian, our bishop, for John, the bishop of South Dakota, <coughs> for Mark, our rector, for Sherry, our deacon, for Stephen, our head of school, for Smokey, David, G Jim, and Gigi, our associate priests. We pray for all bishop, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our words may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, especially Jim, Margaret, Ashley, Ward, James, George, Rose, Sheila, <clears throat> Mike, Dennis, Jack, Richard, Sonny, Holly, Chris, Sarah, Carrie, Brenda, Lois, Faye, Sam, Addie, Blue, Joe, Tristan, Amanda, Kent, Davin, Bob, Lenton, Thelma, Linda, Diane, Brian, Bob, Will, Dave, that they may be delivered from, from their, their distress. distress. We pray especially for these parish families, Bob and Barbara Garrett, <coughs> Dave and Virginia <coughs> Garrett, Anna, Jeffrey, Marin, and Rowena Garrett. We offer Thanksgiving for those celebra celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week. Sharon Pritchard, Lynn Walton, Jean Kaufman, Megan Cordell, Martha Simmerl, Lynn Cross, Jack Athokian. We pray for friends and family serving in the military and as first responders, especially Griffin, Jeffrey, Tim, Hayden and Hunter, Aslan, Daniel, Luke, Hunter, Christy, Kevin, Austin and Luke, Amber, Matt, Nick, Larry, Ashley and Rebecca. We pray for all schools, teachers, students and parents but especially for All Saints School and for those who teach and for those who learn, that as true disciples they may discern how pleasing it is to you to follow in the footsteps of Christ your Son. Give to the departed eternal rest, acknowledging in memorandum especially Louise Harrison Joyce and Sam Kirkley. Light perpetual Light shine upon them. them. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign now and forever. Amen. You stand. Peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace. God's peace. You gonna celebrate? Okay.
Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will they were created and have their being. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, 
but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again, you <coughs> called us to return through prophets and sages. You revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory and their unending hymn. by water and the Spirit. Now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate the end of the resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in prayer. Accept these praise and pra prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing.
God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 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 body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Christ, the bread of heaven. The bread of heaven. Blessing of God. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Blessing of God. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
page 366. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and forever. Amen. He's back. <laughs> Glad I did it. Um, coming backwards, 12 time zones and uh, the uh, international dateline, don't want to do that again. <laughs> that was enough. Senior Warden. I have a lot. Does anybody have anything else to say first? I'll try to be brief then with all that. Uh, um, you've noticed in the bulletin the announcement where we're asking for people to help with serve, uh, where we're streaming. It takes two people, one to run audio and one to run video. And what I wanted to do is give you an idea of what is involved with it. There is some training, which is about an hour and a half to two hours. Um, <coughs> and this is not a gender related thing, uh, male, female. Uh, it's fine. Age is not a, a problem either. Uh, you know, if you're interested, uh, please let us know. I will tell you that we have three teams. Currently, though, we are down to one team and parts of two other teams. So there is, there is a need. Um, usually, if you join a team, hmm, if you join a team, you serve for three weeks straight and then you're off for six weeks. So uh, there's, there's a little bit of uh, time there where you don't have to worry you're not gonna be on. But we do need three, we wanna fill out the teams again and have a couple of people who will fill in for folks at, if they can't make it. In other <coughs> words, if I wanted to get off, I might ask Bill or something to fill in for me or trade times. But we do have a need. And again, it's not that difficult. Also, think about this. You're impacting, you're taking this church to the world. Literally, you are taking it to the world. Uh, yep. I know there's been several people that have come because they've seen our service, got interested in us, and joined the church. Also, I was setting up one Sunday, and a parishioner comes up and says, thank you so much for doing this. I saw it last week. I couldn't be here, and it meant a lot to me. So this is a, a, there's a richness here, too. Anyway, if you're interested, see me, call Skeet, tell uh, the senior warden, tell Mark. Uh, and the, anyway, if you're interested, please let us know. Thanks. All right, Dustin. Since this is barbecue season, I feel like I have to introduce myself this way. Hi, my name's Dustin, and I'm an Episcopalian. <laughs> so I wear a lot of hats around here right now, as you may have guessed. Um, the first thing that I want to say, though, is it's absolutely amazing to see all of the kids here uh, this Palm Sunday. For the parents, I wanted to let you all know 
downstairs <coughs> we have our nursery and children's room for any kids from still crawling to around age 10. Uh, you can drop them off around 9.30 to 10.30 in the morning and leave them with uh, myself, Sarah, and Lisa, the nursery staff, and we will bring them up to you or you can come down and get them right around the time that we do the exchanging of the peaks. That way, you can come up, you can enjoy the service, and we'll have some fun crafts and activities and a lesson for the kids downstairs. All right, one thing down. Two, this coming Easter Sunday, after the uh, Easter luncheon, we'll be having an Easter egg hunt for uh, kids. If you're interested in participating in the Easter egg hunt, please let me know. I need to know how many kids we're going to have so we know how many Easter eggs to fill and how many <coughs> we're going to need to buy. Um, so see me anytime after the service today or send me a text or an email to let me know if you're planning on bringing nieces, nephews, grandkids, kids, your best friend's kids because they want to sleep in on Sunday, whoever it is. Um, so that's two. Uh, number three, barbecue. We're Episcopalians, we love to eat pork. If it's not barbecue, it's bacon on Sunday. Um, Sign-up sheets for the barbecue have been posted. They are in the back corner of the parish hall. If you're interested in helping out in any way, the barbecue first and foremost brings us together as a parish. We, the 1030 crowd, get to see those people that show up at eight o'clock in the morning because, I don't know, they, they like getting up early for some reason. They get to see us, we get to work together. You get to meet people you've never talked to before. Whether you're working a shift on the barbecue pit or helping out in the tent or helping make coleslaw. There are jobs for everyone. It doesn't matter your ability, it doesn't matter how much or how little you know about cooking. Uh, if, you, if you're the kind of person that could be described as someone that could burn a pot of water, we have things that you can help with. So, uh, sign up sheets are there. If you have any questions about what any of the jobs are, I know very little. I feel like I'm going to learn a lot this barbecue about how, uh, how all of the sausage is made. <coughs> um, let's see. Uh, oh, and last but not least, last Wednesday, we got to meet with Reverend Jerry Askew from the diocese. He came down and talked to the members of the vestry about the process for finding someone to fill a very, very large pair of size 12 cowboy boots. Jerry was very reassuring. He explained the diocese will be with us every step of the way. All Saints is in an amazing position to be looking for the next rector that feels a calling to come to our little neck of the woods out here in East Tennessee, one hour outside of Dollywood. There you go. So... We, in the, next, in the coming month, will be starting to form a search committee. If you have any interest in being on the search committee or feel that you can help in any way, pray on it, think about it, ask me questions. After talking to Jerry, I have a lot more answers than I did last week, and uh, I feel like I can, I can at least tell you what the process is. The diocese has a very, very detailed step-by-step-by-step <coughs> Uh, process for us to identify who we are, to think about what we're looking for, to think about what direction we want to go as a parish. So uh, if you're interested, again, pray on it, think about it, talk to me, ask me questions. You'll see me here a lot. Uh, that's about all I have. Any other questions for me? No? Yeah. Good morning. So at the barbecue meeting this last week that we had, uh, we had some new parishioners there and we we're so excited. More people are gonna get involved in the barbecue. But one of the questions was, well, I don't know anything about making barbecue. I don't know anything about making slaw. I don't know anything about making beans. Trust me, it's on the job training. It is not hard. And if you mess up, I have found out in this parish I've tried to get fired up here I've done everything wrong you can possibly do wrong but they won't fire me so we're good to go I am I learned from the best Miss Lena Giles she did slaw making for years and years and years and I shadowed her and it's changed a little bit maybe a little bit I try not to be such an ogre when we're making it but we show up this year we've changed a little bit we and we, we always made it usually on Thursday the first day 
We backed it up to Wednesday because we can keep it in the refrigerator until Friday when we sell it. And it gets us out of the way of the bean making and other things that's going on at the same time. So Wednesday morning, I believe it's the 8th, we st we'll start at 8 o'clock. I would love to have anybody that wants to learn how to make slaw. It's not a lot to it. Um, cabbage, peppers, onions, sugar, oil and vinegar. <laughs> we have a good time. So this year we're going to start at 8, so I need everybody to show up. Let's say I'll give you a 30 minute. You know, so we'll, we'll have a prayer at around 8.30. We'll get our assignments, and um, then we're go we would, should have it all made by about noon. The slaw has to sit and meld all of its flavors together. And then so most of the people that are signing up for slaw are retired, unlike myself, who I take a day off. I am retiring this year, though. So we will start packing slaw around 2 o'clock. And so if you want to work the whole day, we can go have a nice lunch. We can go walk our dogs like Ginger does. We'll come back at 2 and start packing. And again, there's nothing to packing. It's on the job training. So we would love to have everybody that would like to make slaw. Thank you. You can tell when they're making slaw, when you walk into the building, it opens up your sinuses. <laughs> that vinegar just hits you, and you know we're making slaw. Okay. Sir? Okay, this will be very short, and this is mainly for the people out there. Today is the last day for uh, dedicate, well, not today, but this week early, <coughs> is the last day to dedicate flowers for Easter. And uh, I was telling them at 8 o'clock, I love to read all the memorials and the thanksgivings and that sort of thing. So if you want to give flowers or music, contribution for the music for Easter Sunday, and even today, if you don't have your checkbook or whatever, Kathleen will take an IOU. I know she will. Um, and then also, briefly, Holy Saturday at, I'm going to say 1130, Saturday between Good Friday and Easter, small, very short service to remember our loved ones who have gone before us. And it's in the Book of Common Prayer. It'll just be in the pews, so come and join us for about 20 minutes at 1130. You'll see more about it online. Thank you. Okay. Um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday this week of Holy Week, uh, we are going to continue uh, what we did last year with First Methodist and First Presbyterian and have a noonday uh, service of um, noonday prayer. And so tomorrow at noon we'll be here at All Saints. And then uh, Tuesday we'll be at First Methodist and uh, Wednesday we'll be at First Presbyterian. Um, I really enjoy the fact that we can do this I tell people all the time, the biggest part of my job is keeping the Christians from killing each other. So it's nice when the Christians actually are playing well with each other, and we get along well with First Methodist and First Presbyterian. So there is a light soup and salad luncheon following each day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Services start at uh, noon. We'll be done about 20, 25 after. And so you should have time to have lunch and still go back to work uh, in time at 1 o'clock. Um, looking ahead, I realize that uh, I'm starting to count down things like, this will be the last time I do this. This will be the last time I do this uh, before I retire in June. Uh, June 2nd will be uh, my last Sunday. I've asked uh, a dear friend of mine, a priest who's the rector, up at um, Holy Trinity in Stanton, Virginia. He will be coming down to be the preacher for me that day. I don't think I would emotionally be able to preach my last Sunday. Um, but he will be here to be the preacher. He owes me. I've done two services for him. And um, we will only have one service that day at 1030. I've asked the 8 o'clock folks uh, to combined with us so that we can be in one congregation on that day. And uh, the way I asked them was, I promise I will only ask you this once every 30 years. And so they were down for that. Uh, so 
be nice if somebody's sitting in your place because that's their place at 8 o'clock. So I think that's it. Anything else? All right, Jonathan? Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.